football, low ball late. deep into double coverage. Hagerman knocked down on the play and it was almost intercepted, but the ball hit the ground. That was intercepted. Yeah, they, they ruled an interception, but it was not. That ball hit the ground. I don't think they saw it. Drake Jones is the one that's going to come up with it. Yeah. They tried to go up top with a, a jump ball situation there to Mike Hageman. And really, I, you know, there was a lot of bumping going on there, too. From my vantage point, it looked like the ball hit the ground, but it would have been difficult for the official to see it. But uh, yeah, you see it. Well, I guess I don't. You know, I'm so used to watching uh, the, the instant replay rules right. in the NFL nowadays. It's not the ball matter. popped loose. <laughs> and the pass is complete. scores as we go to halftime. Almost a tremendous grab by Matuska. I'm shocked they had a one-on-one -on -one out there. Hey, fuck us up! Come out strong in the second half. Let's go. Everyone on the drive defense. Let's stop them. Come out with a win. We should talk about this before. 
24 minutes. What do you want to do? You got 24 minutes. Every single play, do your job. One play at a time, do your job. Start another kickoff return. Do your job. One play at a time, let's move them off the line. Play defense, score and championship. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's yours. Come on, it's yours. All right, think, play, all right? All right. 24 minutes, Jordan. Fourth and short went for it. We also saw the fake punt. Is that something just to keep the Tigers off guard earlier or something we're going to see more of? No, we feel like we got a pretty good offense. We think they got a pretty good offense too, so we're, we're much happier right. when we have the ball and they don't. And one for five on third down conversions. Any adjustments for halftime to convert a little better? Um, no, I mean, they're good too, so they're going to do stuff, take stuff away from us. Got to kind of keep playing the chase match and uh, have a great second half. Now you define your defense as a no risk defense, but you've been able to read Porter very well. Any risk taking in the second half? No, no, no. We're going to make them. If they're going to score, we're going to make them earn it. Now they're good enough to do that, but uh, we're certainly going to make them earn it. Okay, coach. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. Looking. Nowhere to go with it, and he's going to be sacked. And it's Evan Jackson who gets the sack. The first team all Ohioan brings him down back at the 44 yard line. Boy, does that 59 have a motor? He has shown that this whole game so far, making play after play. He's going to have a Fidber coming in to make it two big pickups right there to get the first down. Just running belly. Good job blocking down by the left side. Thought he might go in for a touchdown, but the important thing is they do pick up the first down. Napoleon Bell tried to rip the ball loose, but it gives you an idea how strong Vidmer is. He didn't let go of it, and he <laughs> took Bell for another yard and a half. Power eye once again. Vidmer stays on his feet. Does he get in? He's got the touchdown. Chagrin Falls is back. And it's a 20 to 13 ball game. He has been all over this field here in the third quarter. They give it to Omar Lane. Look out! Down the sideline. And finally tracked down in a face mask will tack on 15 more. Billy Kale saved a touchdown with a terrific effort down the field, but he may have been guilty of grabbing the face mask. Hawks after starting out with three straight touchdowns, they had punted it four times in a row, and they're back in business. Excellent job focusing on that football and keeping his feet in. Big time throw, big time catch when you needed it in the fourth quarter in the state final. So Austin Underwood delivers the touchdown throw, and his Hartley Hawks are up 27 to 13. Look at our marathon scoring. Extra point attempt. Right down the middle. Grant Wally nails it. All year long, they're going to have to continue to do that. A little squib onside kick. It's loose. Does Kurt Vidmer have it, or did Hartley get it? It looked like number 24, Drake Jones, comes up with it. It's Drake Jones. How do you like that call? You're up 14, and you onside kick it, and they've got it. But Matt, they're consistent, though. They've done that all year long, and I cannot believe Chagrin wasn't more prepared for that. Key in motion. They pitch it to him. Inside, down to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Hartley. Noah Key takes it in from 17 yards out. And the Hartley Hawks have gone up by three touchdowns. Well, that was impressive. They get the touchdown, the onside kick, they recover it, and then it's just smash mouth football right down the field. And that is the clincher. 
Now how about you take the onside kick, you, you surprise him, you recover it, and you run the ball right at him, and that's how you win a state championship. Well, he's kicking. I Marino goes down the field a little high, and it's picked off by Noah Key. Key's got some blockers. Turns the corner, and he runs out of bounds at the midfield stripe. And Columbus Bishop Hartley turns back the Tigers once again. A big turnover gives the ball back to the Hawks with a three touchdown lead. Mind you to please stay off the field following the ball game. 1610 WTBN, Dave Bessold, Larry Larson, Mr. High School Sports, talking high school state championships. We just talked with the head coach of the Bishop Watterson Golden Eagles state champs. Now we're going to talk with the Bishop Hartley Hawks state champs. Coach Brad Birchfield joins us now. Good morning, Coach, and uh, congratulations on the title. Hey, Dave, Larry, how are you? We're good. Now, the difference between you and Coach Pajelic is uh, yours has sunk in one more day. Is it a, a little different feeling today than it was yesterday for you? Oh, no, it feels good. It's, uh, <laughs> we're kind of in recovery mode now, though. It's been a long season, and uh, time to enjoy things through the holidays. Brad, let's uh, start by talking about something that uh, you and I have talked about over the last couple weeks uh, out at school, and that is what made this team a state champion? What were the what were the defining things that made them a state title winner? Well, I think looking back on it, you know, the team got a lot better as the season went on. You know, we lost a uh, a real tough game at Ironton week uh, week eight late season game, and uh, you know we didn't have any big meeting, and there was no uh, you know. No, no fact-finding mission, anything like that. We just kind of kept working and kept getting better, and then uh, really things clicked and we got a lot better. And I think from weeks 9 through 15, uh, we really improved a ton. Uh, you know, we uh, we had turned the ball over early in the season, even though we were winning more than I think we had any time in my career. And we really cut out a lot of the turnovers, and I, I think that was key. And defensively, we were really young this year, and I think with younger players, it takes a little while to get better. You know, they played great football in, uh, in the second half of the year, and they got a lot better, and I think that helped us quite a bit. Brad, uh, the defining moment to me is the Kettering Alder game, despite the fact that Chagrin Falls is the uh, it was your opponent in the state championship game. Uh, Kettering Alder going for their third straight state championship, they trail and then go ahead of you, and it, yet your guys had the character to drive down, get the winning touchdown, get the two point conversion which speaks volumes about the grit and determination of your players. Absolutely. You know, Kettering Alder game, I think, was a watershed game, at least for, you know, since I've been in Hartley and uh, at least our, our tenure. And Alder had just had an outstanding team, and they're so well coached. There's no weakness anywhere on them. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate to get up to a big lead on them, or at least a little bit of a lead. And then they kind of cut it down right before half and came back and made a run on us. And then, but we kind of moved the ball against them uh, really well for the entire game. So we felt pretty good but that that was a game that uh you know we were able to win and uh, go for two to win the kids did a great job and uh, and that, that says a lot about it but you know our kids never uh they never flinch whether they're up or whether they're behind and uh, you know they kind of have the same mentality and the same work ethic every day if anything in the future generations of hawks take from this season i want it to be that that you know just play play the next play regardless of the circumstance just keep playing uh whether you're up whether you're behind you know one of our coaches mike evans he kind of coined the phrase that you know everybody talks about playing like it's the last time they ever played well we want the kids to play like it's the first time they ever played you know when you put on that uniform you put on that uh you know you want to get your first set of pads and you go out in the backyard and get all your buddies together and you just play so hard and, you don't care about the result. Well, that's how we want our kids to play, and uh, that was a good example of that. Coach, we uh, we talked with Coach Bajelic about winning with defense. You guys on Friday pretty much won with offense. A lot of points on the board on Friday. Well, the, we held them to the lowest point total uh, of the year, so we thought holding them to two scores was pretty good. Uh, so I think it was a total team effort. Our special teams made two crucial plays. One, uh, you know, we had a fake punt where the punter ran for a uh, first down in the first quarter, and then in the third quarter or fourth quarter, one of those two, we uh, we went uh, we got the onside kick from them, which we had done for the, uh, quite a few times. So all three phases contributed, and that's why it probably should be a championship game. Brad, uh, the other thing that I certainly want to ask you is the same, same thing I asked Dan Bajelic a little bit ago, and that is, what about the 0-0-0 on the clock? You're the coach of the state championship team 
for you and your staff, can you sort of share with us what it was like to, to finally have that over and you're the state champs? Yeah, it, it's certainly exciting. I don't want to... Uh, I, won't, I don't want to trivialize that, but uh, I don't know that there was any, uh, you know, we didn't have any of those uh, moments with Jimmy Johnson, Miami Hurricane moments where he's jumping up and down on the kids' shoulders and that kind of stuff. There wasn't anything like that. I mean, we're very, very proud, but uh, as cliche as it sounds, it doesn't, may not sound well, but uh, we enjoyed the journey a lot more than winning the championship. I, I, we, I think at some point I may trade the championship to have another week or another couple weeks to, to be with the kids and practice with the kids and be in that locker room and all that camaraderie that comes with that group. And I think that's what probably separates us, you know, besides the championship trophy from a lot of other people. That's really interesting, Coach. That's exactly what Coach Tressel said after they beat Michigan and to uh, secure another share of the Big Ten title was it's the journey that they enjoy. And, and talk a little bit about that, about what you enjoy each week, about going in each week and, and game planning and practicing and, and get ready for a game with your kids. I I think sometimes people on the outside, I think coaches that, uh, you know, I think maybe when we're younger, or I don't know, maybe when we're older, we look at the state championship and we say, man, what would I do to be there? I would just love to, to hoist that trophy and get up on that stage and have that pep rally and all that kind of stuff that comes with it. But I, I think it's the enjoyment, you know, for us. Yeah, there's there's a healthy amount of shenanigans that go on in the locker room, the camaraderie with the team, and there's a lot of fun that comes in there. There's a lot of joking, there's a lot of entertainment, there's a lot of uh, you know we celebrate the right way for sure, and uh, and it's really fun. You know, we meet every day as, a, as an entire team for a pretty good amount of time with film and meeting and whatnot. And I think we miss those kind of things. You know, we people are shocked when we come out. It's not uh, you know I, I think we're we're a well organized football program for sure, but it's not a uh, you know we're not going to war. We're not doing those kind of things. I think we, we try to emphasize the kids that we're having a lot of fun and we're still getting work done as well but uh, we're having fun together and we're going to miss that. And uh, my last thing, uh, Brad, is that you talked to me about the diversity of your kids and how great that was that they went together to win a state title but it's, this is really, really a complex set of kids. Sure, absolutely. I mean, we have kids that are uh, you know, straight-A students, National Honor Society kids, and we've got kids that, you know, we're working with after school, and they're working just as hard in their, uh, in their uh, Western Civilization class as anything else. And we've got kids from diverse backgrounds and kids with extreme, and I guess the, the biggest thing is we've got a lot of kids with very diverse personalities. You know, we have kids that are uh, very serious. We have kids that are a little more jovial. Uh, and we see those kids come together, and you see those parents come together in the stands, and you see that, that's what creates the community, and I think that's where the whole uh, football, I was so proud of uh, Steve Blackledge's article on Friday that, that uh, emphasized the close-knit and the family atmosphere within our program, and uh, I, I think that, that hits it right on target, and that's really cool, and uh, I, I don't know that's everywhere, you know, because I've, I've been able to coach other places, and I, I, I sometimes I think that uh, it's easy for people to say, uh, don't look at the scoreboard. It's not about winning. It's about the journey. But uh, so many people don't believe that. So many people think it's just about winning. And uh, I think probably the score takes care of itself. I think that's probably a byproduct of, uh, of having a great family environment and a great family culture. And I think when you walk into Bishop Hartley High School, Larry, you've done this several times, I don't think you'd be able to walk down the hallway and pick out who played football and right. who played basketball and who played volleyball. You know, we're all, or who's the National Honor Society. I mean, we are all, uh, I never wanted to be those football players. Or the, the, the students know me as Mr. Birchfield. They don't know me as Coach Birchfield. Field. And, and we're really proud of that. We're just parts of a, uh, of just a fantastic high school. And then finally for me, uh, you know, uh, I've always said this, I said this to Dan Bajelic, it's always rewarding to me when you see a, a guy that you have respect for and that's jovial and as, as up-tempo as you are. And at the same time, a guy like Chuck Wooten, who's on your staff, that's given his life to coaching high school and, and uh, middle school kids to win a state championship for a guy like Chuck Wooten, it's got to feel so good, not only for for him, but for you as well. I was so fortunate when I got the job that uh, um, Coach Wooten and Coach Evans also as well as in the same milk decided to stay on with us. I, I promise you without those two guys, we would not be state champions.
Congratulations, Brad, on a great year. Coach, one more. I know that uh, Mindy Dreher is the biggest Hart basketball fan in the whole world. Uh, well, how did she react to the football team winning the state title? Well, I think she <laughs> understands that the pressure may be in her house now to, uh, to take care of some business. And they're going to have a great year. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to being their biggest fan sitting on the end of, edge of the bench. They, they do a great job. And they're pretty exciting. Did, did she call any plays for you on Friday? Because she has a tendency to do that. <laughs> She's saving them for basketball. <laughs> Very good. All right, Coach. Congratulations, man. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, Richfield head coach, the Hartley Hawks. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. We came up. We came up. We came up. We came up. It's all you. It's all you. I love it. 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 Yeah. You guys weren't going to be now you got two state championships in the family, who's the better? Mine. <laughs> Definitely mine. Come on, man! <laughs> Coach Gary Risper, uh, chair of the all season, they really did a lot for us, and the trainers, and especially the coaches and the fans. What was the mindset going in? What was the team feeling? Uh, the team was feeling great, you know, we won four in a row, close games, and we were ready to go, so we wanted to win the game when we came out here and did it. Thank you.